Welcome back, everybody, to part two of our Prison Architect tutorial. In this, uh, this part of the tutorial, we're going to learn about dealing with contraband, uh, setting up a proper regime, addressing needs, and basically trying to run the prison and uh, into the later metagame. Okay, so... It all comes back to rooms. So, what's this staff room? Well, your staff get tired after a while of working and they need to rest. That's pretty self-explanatory, I would think. They, uh, just like in real life, they need to, uh, take it easy sometimes. So we're just gonna build a nice big section right here, which is gonna then contain a hallway. You can see here we've now built an infirmary and a morgue, and this, as soon as this, uh, as soon as it opens up, this is gonna become a cleaning cupboard. What's going to go in? We got to also make sure we have. There's some basic things that the prisoners require, okay? Things such as a shower, a common room for relaxation, a yard, which we can lock that open. And uh, some of the other stuff is, is things like um, being able to wash your clothes and have clean clothes. So that's what this is going to be. This is going to be the laundry. So we're going to go down to rooms, and we can't select it just yet because we don't have prison labor unlocked. But we're going to go up to bureaucracy, and prison labor will be unlocked as soon as it can be unlocked. Now we, we need to hire a maintenance guy and a security chief because these things won't do until we have those people. So we're going to go over here to staff, chief, and a foreman. There we go. Now that we have those two guys, their res uh, respective things can be unlocked, as you'll see in a second. Alrighty. So, let's go back to our planning tool. This guy is now in a coma or something. <laughs> this is why we have to build this particular room that we're going to build. The staff area. So, rooms. Staff room. It has to be a 4x4. Four four, must have a wide sofa and a drink machine. No problem. So, let's go back to planning. Walls. 4x4. Four Okay, materials. Well, make it a little bigger than that. We don't want those guys getting cramped now, do we? So, now that we have a kitchen assigned, we have the logistics button. The logistics button is an important button. It determines where your laundry room, once that is designed, and where your kitchen, you can see here, we can, the demand is 16, we have a supply of 16. So that means that they are building just enough. I expanded the kitchen and the, and the canteen area, just to future-proof it. Always make the canteen a pretty large space, guys, because you're going to be in there a lot, or the, you know, it's going to be, as your prison expands, this is going to be where it's expanding. Sorry, what I'm trying to say is, as it expands, this is going to get more heavily utilized, right? So you want to make sure that you have the space for it. So let's speed up time here. Rooms, staff room. Objects. Wide sofa. And a drink machine. Now, another part of this is going to be deployment. Deployment which we haven't unlocked yet, but will unlock soon, allows you... <clears throat> here it is, go. <clears throat> allows you to determine patrol routes for your guards, okay? Uh, we have a new set of prisoners coming in. A uh, big one. 16 prisoners, which doubles our population. Right, so this is why the holding cell is important, guys, because we only have 20 prison cells and we have 35 prisoners. Where are those extra 15 going? They go into the holding cell. We'll lock that open just so these guys can actually use things. Now, one thing that's important to do is you want to make sure you have your different areas of your prison sealed off, such as this part here. 
If a riot breaks out, you want it to you want these guys to have to work to get to other parts of the prison, especially the part that we're going to be building in a minute. So here we are. We have deployment. You'll notice down here the deployment scheduler. The way the deployment scheduler works is you can decide that based on your regime, for example, we know that we have a bunch of prisoners in the canteen between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. at 2 p.m. and then 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., right? So let's go over here on the deployment schedule and find 9 a.m. This thing should actually be on a 24-hour clock and it's not. It's kind of kind of screwy that way. So you notice how it turned red. The white arrow de uh, depicts the current time. The red arrow depicts the time we've selected. So under this white block, we're going to select it 1, 2, and we know that under at 2 o'clock, it also we need to have something green, so green, and then at 8 and 9. So 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. All right. Let's go back to the breakfast here. So we have, now we have something set up under each one of those time areas, right? So what does that do? Well, we can assign guards. We'll assign two guards to the canteen. Now, uh, under the white time, which is this here, the guards are not assigned there. But we go under green, and we have two guards assigned there. So now, you'll see in a second, come 2 o'clock, the guards will automatically make their way in here. So we're just going to hire a couple more guards to make sure we have that coverage available. You see how two guards came in? And you can see here now we have two guards assigned to this cafeteria because it's lunchtime. Alright, so that's that explained. So the staff room, this is where people will go to rest. And uh, he's researching contraband at the moment, so that's kind of handy because we're going to need to deal with contraband next. Prison labor is now unlocked. We can assign guard uh, prisoners to work in the kitchen. This is something that will help them reform. Reform is important because this is where your grading comes into, ca into play. Now, as you can see, we haven't had any prisoners released yet, so we haven't any uh, particular grading. But you want to try and have a high grading, or in this case, a low reoffending rate on our grading. So, up next, let's build some more rooms here. Cleaning cupboard. This is the prison labor I'm talking about. And now we have intelligence, contraband. This is good. This is good news. Contraband will be collected. Whoops, let's lock that open. Okay, see that symbol there? Hold on. This is a perfect opportunity. These two guys just overdosed. Contraband. This is what I'm talking about when I say contraband. These guys have smuggled drugs into the prison, then they overdosed on said drugs. If the guards were not available to get to them, they would die if we don't get a doctor. To the infirmary so let's make sure we hire a doctor or two actually all right so we're, we need some more money let's go over here check out grants again unlock maintenance through bureaucracy cleaning through bureaucracy groundskeeping through bureaucracy hire a foreman hire at least two janitors hire a gardener so we need two janitors and a gardener to complete that basically so we're gonna go to staff one, two, and one gardener. Boom. More money. Alright, so now how do we prevent people from getting drugs into our prison, right? Well, there's two main ways that you can keep stuff from coming in. Metal detectors are the first and uh, probably the best way of keeping stuff out of your prison. So we're going to set some up right there. And we want some right here so as soon as stuff comes into the prison, it gets scanned. Alright. Alright. This will keep prisoners, and we have to we have to keep in mind that look, this holding cell prisoners can go from here to here to the cleaning cupboard to the staff room if they sneak into it, which they shouldn't be able to. So how do we keep them out of there? Easy, staff only. All right, foreman's office is staff only. Warden's office is staff only. The psychologist they have to be have access to psychologist which they can't because it's behind a staff door. So this is why this is this is not what I wanted originally. So rooms. How do we fix this? Because I wanted to make this the psychology office. So we're going to remove the foreman's office. 
Remove the psychologist's office. And we're going to assign... Where's offices? I don't think this is going to work. Foreman. It did. Okay, perfect. And psychologist. Sometimes they get remapped. So back in deployment. Off bounds, off bounds, off bounds. You got to make sure you don't put something behind an off bounds room. So if I went off bounds here, the prisoners couldn't actually leave their cells because they'd be going into a staff only area. All right. And if we wanted to determine that this is going to be only for normal sec, if we had a mixed population prison, for example, if we had multiple cells, we'd want to say that this is the medium sex cell, this is the high sex cell, this is protective custody, and this is min sec, for example, okay? If you just imagine these are different cells. That's how we would determine who goes where. All right. This is just an, this is a starting guide. This is not the advanced game stuff. I'm just giving you the overview of all the things you're going to need to do to make sure your prison's running properly. So let's get back over here. Now we have laundry un uh, unlocked. Because prison labor is unlocked. And we need a laundry machine, a laundry basket, and an ironing board. Okay, so let's go to objects. Let's go find an ironing board. And some laundry machines, which unfortunately are not able to have their orientation changed at the moment. Keep that in mind when you install them. And we need laundry baskets. Alright, utilities. We're going to need to supply water and power to the laundry machines. Let's just keep, take a look at our power. Yeah, we're going to need some more power in our prison, so let's add a couple more capacitors. That door is going to get blocked, so I'm going to dismantle the door, and we're going to move it. Oh, we've got some metal detectors that need power as well. So let's go over here and drag over the power. Alright, so it's free. you can see it's free time here. Some guys are going for a shower. Some guys are hanging out in their cells. Some guys are just taking it easy. There we are. More capacitors are on it. And I'm just going to wait till they get the laundry finished. I'll be right back. Okay, so looking under logistics, we can now see that the laundry is finished. Well, almost finished. They're going to get the baskets in there still, but come here. Oh, they have the baskets. Okay, so we're going to go into logistics. And we're going to make sure that under laundry distribution, that's correct. There we go. We've got the two sections that are now for laundry, okay? Our holding cell and our shower and our uh, regular cell block are being addressed by this laundry room right here. Food distribution is the exact same way. All right, supply and demand is being shown here. So this is important to know exactly that we have X number of prisoners. We have to make sure we, have, we can feed them all, right? So let's get back to some more uh, important stuff here. We have intelligence. Intelligence tells you where all the main sources of contraband in your prison are coming from. You can stop a lot of these sources of contraband by simply making sure that you have metal detectors in key spots to stop contraband from coming in and out of your prison, right? The next thing that's important... What is that noise? Somebody's smashing something up. So how do we keep that from happening again? Let's go into deployment. Make sure we select a white area. Because we want a guard in here at all times. And let's put two guards in there. There we go. Now guards will hang out in this area. Alright, so back to uh, intelligence. Pardon me. On the side here we have our supply and demand graph, okay? So this is showing the supply in our prison at the moment. And the demand for certain items. Well, I don't want the, it to be like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shakedown. And what a shakedown does, as you can see, it for it makes the, uh, the staff search the entire prison. Any spot there could be contraband hidden. And they will go through and they will search every prisoner and every single spot. Key piece of advice. Always do a shakedown or any kind of wide area search at night. 
Reason being, as you can see here, 15, 14 prisoners have been unnecessarily searched recently. This makes them angry. And they get complaints about that. If you do it at night, you'll notice how this number is at 16, now it's at 15, 17, 16, it's going down. See how it keeps going down? Because these guys, as they sleep it off, they don't care anymore. So we still have 15 guys who are unhappy about it, okay? 14, 13, you can see the numbers dropping. If you do this during the day, you're going to have a lot of angry prisoners who are going to erupt and fight and crash up your place and do kinds of horrible stuff that you don't want happening, okay? So, what's the next thing to do? Well, we, what's this weapons rack? Well, this is important, okay? This is where uh, some more advanced items are coming into, our, into play now, okay? So, we have different types of staff here. We have armed guards and we have dog handlers. We require dogs for that. Let's go up to bureaucracy and unlock dogs. Tasers is something that you're going to get with the armory. Tasers are expensive. Very expensive. But they'll put down any kind of a uh, an issue. Once you get a couple of armed guards up in here. And a taser rollout gives tasers to every single one of your guards. But you can't just expect them to show up and use tasers. Tasers are an advanced weapon. So what we need is a classroom. I'm going to go down here to find education. Oh, we need to make visitation still. We haven't built, made a visitation room. We should do that next. But let's focus on the classroom at the moment here. So we're going to go find classroom. Classroom. Where the heck is classroom? Education. Bureaucracy. Education. All right. So while that's being researched, we're going to go over here and we're going to build ourselves a visitation room. Try to build your visitation room near the front of the prison, guys. Uh, reason being, it's going to make the prisoners have an easier, and the people who come to your prison, an easier way of getting in and out. Visitation is an important one because it keeps your prisoners happy. Happy prisoners equal less problems. Alright, so while, this, while the classroom is being built and education is being researched and visitation is being built, let's get... Oh, we probably should have removed that fence. Excuse me. There we go. Okay, objects. We need to put a door here. So let's put a uh, heavy solitary door since it is a quick route outside. We don't want the guys escaping easily. Whoops. That can happen, don't worry. We got some more prisoners arriving. Objects. Visita visitors table. There we go. So now the visitation room is there. Let's assign it. Visitation. Visitation. Okay, this is going to be a classroom once that gets unlocked. What's this? We need to build an armory, though, and a kennel next, okay? An armory is a very dangerous place. Rem uh, remember this, okay? Incredibly dangerous place to have in your prison. Prisoners get to the armory. They can and will steal guns and kill your staff. So make sure you always keep the armory, which we're going to build right here. Cordoned off, okay? Okay, uh, so the armory, like I said, is an important room. It's it's dangerous to have it because if you if guys get into it, they can mess up your day. So make sure it's behind a couple of heavy locked doors. If there's a riot. This is the first place they're going to go for, okay? 
always put it behind a couple of heavy locked doors. So we need some weapons rack, a table, and a guard locker. Now the number of guard lockers you put in here determines how many armed guards you can have on site. Okay, and next thing we want to do is we want to build a kennel. Five by five is also required. Okay, so where can I build a five by five? Shoot, I don't have any space for a five by five up here. So we're just going to build it in this area here. Okay, so uh, planning. So make that the kennel. Objects. We need dog crates. Everybody's in the yard, as you can see. Okay. Oh, I need to put a door here. We'll make this the security office. Four by four minimum requirement. Needs an office desk, chair, and a filing cabinet. So, office desk. Chair, filing cabinet. Okay, I think we can do classroom now because I think we have education. So rooms, classroom. This is where people are going to get trained for tasers. So we need another office desk. A filing, I don't know if you need a filing cabinet. No, you need school desks now, which are here. So, now we have every room we need for our prison, I believe. Let's check it over. Security, offices, garbage, delivery, canteen, kitchen, yard, shower, execution doesn't work, workshop. We need to make a workshop still. All right, workshops are, again, a part of the prisoner reform program that I was talking about earlier. So we're going to start building that next. So the last room in our prison is the workshop, and the workshop is a reform program area. This allows the prisoners to have access to various um, machines that in turn they can use to make items for you. Now these are also pretty power intensive, so just keep that in mind, okay? And we've run out of money, so how do we deal with that situation? Easy. Easy fix. Visitation rights. Uh, 
All right. Okay. So objects, these presses, as you can see, these things are expensive, very expensive. But the payoff is well worth it, let me tell you. You can see the metal detectors are getting stuff scanned now, that's good. We want to install two more metal detectors down here because a lot of contraband comes out of, oops, can come out of the uh, workshop and the laundry room. Let's make sure we're going to have enough power. We'll be fine. So, now we have a kennel. We can hire some dogs. While well, that's being all built down there. So, dogs and armed guards. They are unique in the sense that... Dogs are the only things that can properly detect contraband. So we want to have a few of those guys. Alright, and armed guards keep people suppressed. We're going to have to expand that shower pretty substantially. That's very overcrowded. That's ridiculously overcrowded. Anyway, so let's set up, while that uh, workshop's being built, let's set up some dog patrols. So we want to make sure we're on the white area. Because we don't want it to be assigned to a certain time frame. Not at all. And we're going to set up a dog patrol right here. And right here. Okay, and we'll, ha we'll have the third one to keep the, uh, the guys... So, let's lock this open here. And that's what dogs do. They can smell stuff. So they're gonna find all the contraband in the prison. That's their job. And they're gonna be... A, they're very good at that job. So... Let's just move him into here. See all this puke? This is people who are drunk in our prison. So now the workshop's established. We have all the all the basic rooms of the prison up and running. Alright. But you have to assign people to do these jobs. And this brings us to the last thing I'm going to touch on here, which is policy. And we can determine how our prisoners are going to be treated around here, okay? So I generally like to assign, assign punishment to people who do serious things, like a stack, attack staff to solitary, which we don't have any solitary cells built, which we can build that quickly. So objects, uh, materials, brick wall. Let's build one right out here. Oh, I think it needs to be indoors, to be honest. Enclosed by walls and doors. Yep, that's fine. Alright, so objects, solitary door. And we're out of money again, so let's go over here to valuation. And we can sell shares of our prison to make a little bit of extra money. That's that's one option. Not a great option. But it will make us quite a bit of coin. Alright, so there we go. We got some money back. And rooms, solitary. So there we are. We now have solitary uh, confinement cells for people who are extra bad. Like this guy, apparently. Who had drugs on him. And this guy had drugs on him. And that guy had drugs. Oh my goodness.
All right, so policy. Policy determines how your crimes are handled in your prison. All right, so we've got uh, attack staff is solitary, solitary found weapons is solitary, found drugs is also solitary. All right, so this is, and then you're going to determine how long they stay in the cells and if you're going to search them or their cell. Certain things you want to definitely have searching for. An escape attempt, destruction, not necessarily, but attack staff, seriously injured, that's the same kind of story. Only that could be with another prisoner, so we want to do that. Intoxication, this, I, this kind of idea, right? So, that's that. Now we're going to move on to programs. Programs are very important. Programs are what allow people to do stuff in your prison. So, workshop safety introduction. Guess what that does? It allows them to get trained to work in the shop. No regime time slot. Right. So we got to come back here and we got to set up work hours now. And we're going to set it up right there. Nice block of it right there. Okay. So now during that work time, we're going to go back to programs. Stop. Start. Okay. Kitchen safety and hygiene. You get some guys working in the kitchen. Okay. Carpentry apprenticeship. That's the second tier of this. We have no equipment for it because it's just a basic prison, okay? But that's what allows you to make beds. This is incredibly hard to accomplish, this one here. Education Foundation Program works in our classroom here. All right, we're going to set up three for that. Or two, I guess. Carpentry apprenticeship we can't do. General Energy. Uh, this is the second tier of the education program. Also incredibly hard to accomplish. And all rooms are booked at the moment. Okay, so no problem. Uh, behavioral therapy is with the psychiatrist. Oh, that should be doable. All rooms staff only. Uh, okay, so it'll tell you things that you've done wrong. Like, I made the psychiatrist's office staff only, so they can't go into it, obviously, okay? So we fixed that by doing that. There we are. Okay, so back to programs. All right, so that's all fixed. Carpentry apprenticeship, education, pharmacological drug treatment. This is the most effective one for dealing with people who have a addiction to drugs or alcohol, okay? It's expensive, though. Just remember that. Keep this in mind. All this stuff costs money. This is not free stuff. Alcoholics group therapy is carried out in the common room, but you need chairs there. And then guard taser certification, we don't have that just yet. No equipment is what it's asking for. It's asking for chairs in the common room. So objects. Uh, common room, common room, common room. I can never find anything on this list. I really, really can't. I don't know why it's so hard to do, but it is. So there we go. All rooms booked. Stop, stop, stop. That's referring to the lack of available. There we go. The psychiatrist, psychologist, he does behavioral therapy, but he also does the alcoholics group therapy. So if you have multiple psychologists, you can have multiple group therapies. If you only have one, you can only do it in one spot. All right, guys. So I think I've shown you pretty much everything that you need to know to basically run your prison uh, to, starting, to start off. I do recommend going through and getting as many of these grants completed as early as possible as you can because it will get you a lot of extra money. Balancing the regime, as you can see here, we've set it up. Shower time, free time for bowels and bladders. Breakfast, free time to take care of their needs. Work time, free time to deal with their needs. Dinner time, free time to deal with their needs. And then sleep. This is a very good, balanced thing. And we just had an escape. All right, so this guy, he's made a, a run for it with a pair of scissors, apparently. All right, so I'm assuming he's in this cell. He was in this cell right here. I'm kind of glad that happened. So we're going to search the cell block, actually. 
I'm gonna find out where he was coming from. So that guy escaped. Now generally what happens is these guys will work in teams. So we want to make sure we don't get anybody else trying to escape right now. I'm assuming he was in this cell here, but it's... We'll see in a half second here. No, he wasn't. Where did that tunnel come from? Well, that's bizarre. Alright, so we're going to send one of our staff to determine where that came from to remove tunnel. Okay, so he's going, the worker's going to go over here, and he'll be able to tell us where that tunnel came from. Yeah, that's what I thought, all the way over there. Now, I'm surprised that searching the toilets didn't discover that. It should have, so I don't know why it didn't. That's a little bizarre. But that's how you deal with tunnels, guys. That's why it's important to, to, to do searches and check for that stuff. Now, looking at the needs, you can see here all the different stuff that is in high demand here. Recreation refers to free time stuff that they're going to take care of, okay? Comfort is being able to sit in a chair or a bench. Bladders and bowels, self-explanatory. Sleep, self -explanatory. food, that's self-explanatory. Safety is the level of safe that the prisoners feel in your prison. Is there a lot of riots, murders, uh, assaults happening? Reduce those, it'll, it'll make this better. Hygiene is showering. Exercise is time spent in the yard. Family and is uh, visitation and phone call use. Recreation refers to being able to go into the yard or just do running around. That's what yard time is usually good for, but free time can handle that same issue. Comfort, I already explained. Environment is the cleanliness of your prison, so all this crap on the floor here. Privacy is referring to this mon monstrosity of a holding cell that I knew was going to be big for this episode. Never big, make it this big have more cells. That's what privacy refers to. Freedom is their, well, their desire to be free, but that's just never going to happen. So this is what's being taken care of with freedom. They need to go outside. Clothing is laundry. Drugs and alcohol is a requirement that they have as addicted individuals. So guys, I think that's pretty much all I can tell you for basics of how to play Prison Architect. Uh, find out the rest on your own. Watch my series for more tidbits on how to build prisons. This is a very sloppy, basic construction design, and it's here just so you guys get an idea of the kind of things you need for each prison. Um, I hope this was informative to you. I know it was a little bit long. I mean, the two episodes alone are together are over an hour, so... But I feel like there's a lot of information here to tell you guys. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have questions or comments, do leave them. I will reach. I will get back to you. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode of Even Better Presents.